Ladies and gentlemen, before we start, I'd like to share with you some soft reminders. The course today will be separated into three sessions with Q&A session after each. The registration link will be given at the end of the session. Please fill in your particulars accurately for the UTM Merit and e-certificate purpose. All participants are welcome to raise your questions in the chat box according to each session. You are reminded to keep your microphone muted throughout the course. Thank you for your cooperation. A very good morning. A very good afternoon to our respective speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Lau Weijie, and all the participants. Welcome to the nice postgraduate online structured course entitled Strategies to Write a Review Paper, organized by the Postgraduate Student Society, BGFS, BGSS, a Faculty of Science, University of Technology, Malaysia, UTM. I am Leong Xingyi, your moderator for the day. Now, let's start our course by introducing our respective speaker for today, Associate Professor Dr. Lau Weijie, an Associate Professor at School of Chemical and Energy Engineering, University of Technology Malaysia, UTM, and a Senior Research Fellow at Advanced Membrane Technology Research Center, MTech, UTM. He obtained his Bachelor of Engineering in Chemical Gas Engineering and Doctor of Philosophy, PhD in Chemical Engineering at UTM. He has published over 150 scientific papers, 15 review papers, and 18 book chapters. He is also the author of Nanofiltration Membranes, Synthesis, Characterization, and Application, published in 2017. In 2018, he was appointed as Young Professionals Associate Member YPMA, YPAM by International Water Association Specialist Group, Membrane Technology and Awarded with Australian and the Royal Research Fellowship in 2015. Not only that, he even joined a few international exchange programs at Iran, Indonesia, Turkey, and Japan from 2016 until 2019. Recently, he has been appointed as the editor of Water Reuse by International Water Association. I must admit that Associate Professor Dr. Lau really owns a very wonderful and inspiring achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our speaker today, Associate Professor Dr. Lau Weijie. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will share my screen first. Uh, Manuel, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, PGSS, and also the moderator for the very nice introduction. And I'm Lau from uh, University of Technology, Malaysia. And, and uh, how to say, uh, this presentation, more, more or less, it will be last for 90 minutes, and it depends on the Q&A. If there are more questions, then uh, it will maybe longer than uh, one and a half hours. And uh, also, I have prepared some of the frequently asked questions uh, in my presentation. So I will ask the question myself, because this is a journal question normally asked by the students. So uh, this is uh, three important parts that I will cover for this presentation. The first part is uh, the introduction, and typically the types of a publication and what kind of things you need to prepare before manuscript writing. And I think nowadays, yeah, there are many students yeah. who you write a, you can write a manuscript, yeah. you manuscript. Yeah. But uh, I think there are some yeah. account, maybe yeah. someone. Yeah. Huh, sorry, maybe some uh, participant. Can you mute yourself? Yeah. Because you will, yeah. Maybe the host. Can you yeah. mute the participant? I think manually you can mute them. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, we divide it into three main parts. The first part is the introduction, the type of the publication. When you have a manuscript, I think it's quite important for you to submit uh, which journal you want to submit. Because uh, I, I think, as you know, there are few different uh, parts of the journals. And I will tell you uh, how to uh, check the journals and also their part time. And in the part two, uh, we will go through uh, the preparation what you need to prepare for the review manuscript. The last part is uh, also very important. We are not teaching you how to prepare yourself a manuscript. I also give you some guidelines how you can submit the proposal. Because when we come to the review manuscript, I, I believe uh, you will realize some of the journal they have a, uh, instruction or guidelines. You cannot simply submit through the system. 
you need to write a proposal. So proposal, there are several ways. Later, I will show to you. And lastly, what you can expect after you submit and how long, et cetera. So there are some of the uh, general information. Perhaps uh, it's good for you for the time being, especially when you are first semester student. So by the way, uh, I'm also uh, just how the moderator said I'm the editor for the water reserves. So at the same time, also the subject editor for the chemical engineering research and design, Elsevier. And this, uh, maybe some of you have published with this journal before because this is part, one of the journals in uh, Elsevier Site Direct. And uh, also I'm the core uh, editor for the one journal in my, uh, UTN, Journal of Applied Membrane Science and Technology. So my research background mainly focused on the membrane for water and wastewater treatment. So uh, my first review actually published when I was a student uh, in 2009, and I spent, uh, I think, more than one and a half year to prepare the manuscript and got uh, two rejections. I made the rejection with a review. There is a comment I received that I revised. And uh, eventually, I tried the third journal. Uh, I got the exception eventually. So I, what I want to tell you here is, uh, if you say like 10 years ago, Review article, I don't think a lot of supervisors will ask you to write a review 10 years ago. But uh, if you look at the past three to five years, I believe more and more supervisors will ask you, uh, can you write a review uh, together with your supervisor, something like that. Because review normally, the good thing of it is you will receive a better citation, uh, total number of citation per paper compared to the technical paper, which is the reason why uh, some supervisor they would prefer to go for the review uh, before the students start to run the experiment. So even until 2021, I still have a review, but but we we cannot all the time write the review. This is basically impossible because review need time and need some experience. And this is why what, what what I will share you with with you today here. So uh, what I want to tell you here is what I share you here is as a uh, based on my experience as an uh, author as a reviewer and also as a, a editor. So most importantly, also based on my experience as a former student. Yeah. So type of publication, the first part is a presentation. And most of students, I think you always know Scopus. I think when you talk to your friends, I want to publish a journal in a Scopus. I want to publish a, with a, one journal in a web of science. But there are many times it's, uh, what they are different between Scopus and Web of Science. I think this is the first thing you need to differentiate. The simple thing differentiate both of them is uh, they are actually indexed with different companies and different uh, countries. Scopus is actually belongs to Elsevier, Netherlands. And uh, Web of Science, uh, now normally some people are called Carrier Analytics. It belongs to uh, one company in USA. So if you compare between Scopus and Web of Science, Normally, uh, web of science, they will index the journal with a better quality or have a better reputation. That's the reason why if you look at the number of the journals indexed in the web of science, actually it's less compared to the Scopus. Yeah. Because those for those journals indexed in the web of science and they have a, they can be given other journals to cite and they can build their own impact factors, et cetera. And we also have some of the journals. If you look at here, uh, index is emerging source, uh, citation index in short form ESCI. And this kind of journals, uh, they will not receive impact factor, but will be included in the citation count for the journal citation report. Maybe I give you one example of uh, the journal from UTN, where this is a journal technology. It's, kind of, it's one of the journal index in ESCI. It has a status, but it haven't received the impact factors. And the last uh, two of them, they are lower quality in terms of the index. We have a journal index in the Google Scholar. And if you have a new journal in Malaysia, I think normally they will index in my journals. So these two journals normally, uh, they will index even though the journal is very new. Even today, this year is the first publication, you already can ask for the index in Google Scholar and My Journal. 
Okay, well, or size, uh, when you have, when you identify which kind of a journal, the differences between the scopus and web of science, then the next part is uh, you need to know about the journal metrics. And I think nowadays, your supervisor, I, I can feel the stress of the student now because I was also a student before. The supervisor always will say, okay, we, we cannot publish in this journal. Well, our journal must be have certain quality, et cetera, et cetera. So I think you need to understand what metrics is the most important as a student. The most important metric is a journal citation report. Okay, this is a premium one. If you ask me, whenever the journal citation report come with a, the latest uh, analysis statistic, people always refer to it. So this is a premium one, which is normally student will say journal impact factor. And the second one is come from a scopus. It itself have a, a metric called science score. Okay, it's actually the history of the science score is, uh, is very short compared to the journal citation report. Uh, science score only started in 2016. I think journal citation report, if I'm not mistaken, easily started since uh, 1960, 1976, something like that. Means uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago. So there is a difference. And then we also have other uh, metrics like SNEED, like the uh, SJR, etc. So all these, uh, they have uh, their own definition. Uh. So I give you a very simple example here. If you look at the website like Taylor and Francis, normally they will show you the metrics somewhere here, okay, on the page of about the journals. So you can see here impact factors, you can see here size score from the scopus, you can see here SNP, and you can see HJR. So in UTN, and I mean in Malaysia in general, the uh, citation, I mean the impact factor always come from the, this one, uh, web of science. We always say JCR, Journal Citation Report. Okay, and how how to know the impact factors? Because uh, most of the journal nowadays, uh, especially the good journal, they will always uh, present the impact factor in their website because this is a way to show how how good or how how high the impact factor of their journal. And I give you an example. This is the one journal from uh, Science Direct, Elsevier, and there's an impact factor on the uh, appear on the website and sometimes the student will ask uh, we only know impact factor then how we know the good quartile of the journal okay whether it's a q1 q2 q3 q4 you basically very difficult to get from the web page so what you can do here is you refer to the this impact factor then you search through the publication title in the journal citation report then the numbers Impact factor should be the exactly same like the journal of industry. Should be the same like on appear on the journal of first page. Okay. Uh, we have a case student say or some of our friends say like we get the number impact factor very high in the journal website, but when we try to search to the journal citation report, we cannot find anything about the journal. So this kind of the thing happens. So you need to be careful because uh, possibly the impact factor is a uh, not the JCR uh, impact factor, it comes from other kind of the calculation. So always if you, for your, for safety reasons, I think you need to double check yourself to the journal citation report. And on the journal citation report, you also can check the quarter of the journal, Q1, Q2, Q3, or Q4. There's a case that when the journal without any impact factor, basically they don't have any Q. Okay, they just, uh, index in uh, maybe is ESCR. So in back factor, I will not go through very detail, just tell you uh, how it calculates. For example, this year uh, is 2021, and we do have a 2021 in general impact factor. We only had 2020, the latest one. So this 2020 general impact factor 6.064, which is, uh, I refer to this one, uh, same journal. And it's come from the paper published number of paper published in 2018 and 2019, which is about four years ago and three years ago. And then uh, we count how many citations in 2020 to the paper published in 2018 and 2019. So we come out the number 7,252 divided by number of the papers in two years, and you get the impact factor somewhere here. So this is the way they do the calculation, okay? So I hope you, if you want, really want to know further how the impact factor 
was developed. Yeah, I mean, the history you can always, uh, I think Google, I think it's all information. So there's a question uh, here, impact factor and quartile journal. Which one is important? I I can say to you is depends on your uh, research field. I can tell you here is if you look at this mathematical progress, journal impact factor uh, less than four, but the quartile can be a Q1. We have a journal like Steel Research International, impact factor just two, but the quartile is a Q2 journal. So what? It's an important always is if you look at the high impact factor, especially someone dealing with advanced material, you will feel like you need maybe five or six to be a Q1. But if you go for the some other category, maybe less than four, you already Q1. So actually, if you ask me, it's purely based on your research field. So high impact factor, of course, is very good, but if you are working on the particular field, sometimes the impact factor value wouldn't go too high because the citation number of the research field is less compared to other category, which is very hot topic. And uh, okay, uh, facts and figures about UTM publication. Maybe a uh, student, you know, we, we publish a lot of paper, but in terms of the web numbers, you have no idea. So this is a UTM publication. And up to uh, this month, early this month, we have in total published 43,000 papers. And if you look at our trends, we are very aggressive, particularly since, uh, if you ask me, since 2009, we jumped a lot and close to 4,005 papers per year. And and then we maintain always is close to uh, 4,000 all the time for the past several years. Then the question comes here is, out of these 43,000 publications, how many percent of them are reviewed? How many percent? 20 percent? 10 percent? 5 percent? So which one do you think? If you go further, because the scopus out there, they are very advanced, you can do the search, you can uh, limit to what you want to see, then you get a lot of information. If you go further, this is just a general from UTM, but I believe if you, if you try to go to check from uh, for other universities, I think more or less the the percentage of the review is a is a low. You wouldn't go too high one because still at the end, researcher mainly publish technical paper compared to the review. So if you look at this one, this is a UTN data. Only four percent, four percent of our publication are reviewed. And if you do some further calculation, it means that every one hundred papers published by UTN, four are reviewed. So the number is very very small. So it means not every student you will publish a review. This is for sure. Okay. So you, you just do your best. I would say like it's not like everyone capable. Yeah. This is something like you need to uh, plan in advance uh, when you start your research or PhD or master. So I have come up with a frequently asked question here. The first is uh, I want to write a review from the student side. But I don't know how to start. What can I do? Uh, you want to write a review is a good thing, uh, but you don't want how to start. I think this is a thing that you always need to refer to your supervisor because your supervisor is the one always guide you and ask you, uh, guide you, and then give you ideas what you should do, what you should start, what how you can carry out your research. This is the first thing because because your supervisor, no matter how, they have a more experience compared to you in the particular of research field or subject topic. The second one, I'm a postgraduate student, uh, PhD level at semester one. Normally, how long does it need to complete a first draft? I mean, we are talking about the draft, complete draft, haven't submitted to any journal, how long? Uh, if you ask me how long, I would say like, I mean the good one, uh, maybe nine to one year plus. From the start until you develop a very nice uh, review draft, I think this is a uh, quite reasonable. But some maybe need longer time, like one and a half year. Like when I was a student, I think I used because at, at the time ten years, 15, ten years, twelve years ago, is actually review is not not very famous and hot topics. I took about one and a half year. Then I only submit semester four, something like that, and then eventually semester five I got acceptance. 
But if you tell me you only use three months to write, come out with a review, your own, I would say like too short, too short. Like. Maybe you can come out with a review definitely, but in terms of the quality within the three months, uh, and another good thing is you don't really have experience, three months to come out with very high quality review, uh, I would say time is too short for you. And the third question, can I write more than one review article review on my postgraduate study? I think if you tell your supervisor, I think definitely they are happy. Uh, you want to write more than that. But if you already have one, I think it's very good enough for your PhD or master study. Is it a must to write a review article in order to meet the requirement of thesis submission? Uh, I think students also ask, uh, why my supervisor asked me to do, is it required by the UNICE or what a requirement by my supervisor? But if you look at the UTN criteria uh, publication requirements uh, for master study, and for PhD study, I mean for the student UTN, they only need you to, to have a publication of book chapter, but they don't indicate must be a review article. So review article can be considered as one publication, but it's not compulsory. You must write review article in order for you to graduate. So this is a thing that I, I hope you can uh, see. Uh, it's not compulsory, but it's good to have because uh, eventually, as I say, review articles that will give you better citations. So uh, I will stop for a while. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, maybe I need to exit. I will see what kind of question. Or someone, you can unmute yourself and then you can ask. I don't know how it will be conducted. Anyone can. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Lau, for the informative sharing session. Thus, that's the end of part one, and now it's time for a question and answer session from part one. To all participants, you may type your questions in the chat box or raise up your hand before unmuting your audio. We have several questions here. We'll start with question from Pang Juan Kin. Dear Prof, how many articles required to read minimum in order to write a good review article? Okay, okay. Uh, it's, it's a good question. Uh, actually, I prepared the question later on, but I can ask you first. I can answer you first. Uh, how many papers? If you look at the normal, typical review article published online or the one you review, I mean the standard length, I would say like 70 to 100 plus will be a, quite a good one, 70 to 100 plus. And of course, if you ask my personal experience, how much review article can have a references? I saw one before, 450 references, 450 above. When I look at the paper, it's very good quality. The reference itself already, I think, 10, 20 pages because there are 450 references. So it's still at the end, it depends on how big the scope you want to cover. But I mean, the standard one will be 70, 80 to 100 plus. Hardly we see 200, more than 200, hardly, but possible, possible. Yeah. And then, thank you, doctor. And then we have next, next question from Irene Truma. Prof, how much is the fee to publish in Scopus Journal? Uh, most of the time, uh, we publish the one, it's a free one, unless you want to pay so that uh, it will be open to everyone. There's a, a optional one. But of course, there are some journals, uh, they need you to pay the money. They call it like APC, Article Processing uh, Charge, APC. So the one, I mean, Malaysian, our, our our funder most of the time don't really allow you to use the money to pay for the publication fee because because one publication normally for the good journals they will cost you maybe five thousand to ten thousand ringgit per paper per paper. So we always try someone some some journal like they don't really require APC. Yeah. Okay. I hope you answer your question. Thank you, Doctor. And then we have next question from Ta Yong Mon. Dear Prof, dear, dear Prof, do you think a single author is able to pull off a systematic review article? Because I really like to try that, but the protocol is keeping me at this. Sorry, I let me let me check the question. Can you repeat? I Dear I, Prof. Yeah. Do you think a single author is able to pull off a systematic review article? Because I really like to try that, but the protocol is keeping me at this. Single author, it means that you try without your supervisor. You want to submit without a supervisor name or what? Or, or you try to write your own and eventually your supervisor part of your core order. Which one actually you want? Because if you are registered in UTN, 
let's say if you are resident you then you have a supervisor i think single author per paper is not really workable like, if you ask my for my experience because your supervisor is the one to supervise you you register in UTN uh, it must come with a UTN lecturer as the co-author yeah I hope we we'll answer your question I hope and then we have next question evening doctor in your opinion as PhD student which one we should in journal or two proceedings uh, if possible, a journal always is better than proceeding. Journal always is better than proceeding. The, you, you, you need to, if as a student, maybe you don't see the, the long term uh, effect. Like as a lecturer, I think most of the lecturers, they realize I can publish 10 proceeding, but, but eventually after five or 10 years, when we look back the paper we published before proceeding, we can see that the citation of on our paper in positive is far less compared to you publish in the journals, the real journals. Yeah. Uh, doctor, I think Ted would like to ask some question. Would like to speak. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Me unmute. Sure, Good afternoon, sure. Prof. Um, well, regarding to the question just now, as a systematic review paper, um, what I mean is I'm the one who is responsible to write that paper. But oftentimes, when I check with the publication, the criteria seems like it's a group of author that they would be able to pull off that level of the paper, you know. Uh, uh, but of course, my supervisor name will be on it. It's just like I will be the one who take care of the writing part. And I would like to know as a single, uh, like a one person job, it's like a one person job, is it able to write a systematic review? Okay, I I, I understand your question now. Uh, possible, because I was a student before. <laughs> yeah. Possible, possible. It depends on your commitment on the paper. Because when I was a student, I wrote a first review together with my professor. There are only two names. You can check later on. It's only two names. My name and my supervisor. Possible, possible. If you put effort on the paper, your supervisor most of the time, he will just give you a very uh, general comment to, to further improve the quality. To make sure when you we do the submission, the chances is higher for the acceptance. Yeah. Because away supervisor they have more experience compared to students. You can think they, they're already in the in the academy line for maybe 10, 20 years. And they submit many, many papers, they receive different comments from different reviewers. I think their experience is very good to help you to look something that you overlook or you miss out in the review. Yeah. Possible, possible. Thank you, Prof. All right, then we have next question from Alex T. Good introduction, Prof. Like to ask for the review paper, what would be the optimal year range for re literature review? Example, within 10 to 20 years. What is the what? Uh, sorry. Uh, the oh. review paper, optimal year range for the literature review. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, this one I also, I also will cover later on, but we can answer you first. Uh, always is, when you want to write a review, I think you should cite as much as possible the paper published in the latest five years. Yeah. Because if you if you cite a lot of paper published ten years ten to twenty years, twenty years ago, I think someone someone already has that kind of review at the time. So you should come up with a review that can uh, give people better idea of the latest development of your subject topic. Yeah. All right, thank you, Doctor. And then we have the next question. What if for the research field there is not much research article to be reviewed, but most of them are like more than five years? Can the articles be used? Yeah, yeah, okay. This one will be uh, very difficult. There's a reason why every time when we, my, I think myself, uh, I don't know other supervisors, when our site, we want to come up with a new review, we always ask the student or even myself, we will go through the online and then we will download the papers. And if we only can download 10 or 20 papers, I mean, no matter how you try, you ask your student to search, you only have 20 papers, the most you can you can search for your topic. And you force yourself to write a review based on 20 papers published. Uh, I would say like it's quite difficult, quite difficult because uh, the number of uh, reference is small, the number of reference is small. There is a reason why if you, if, as I mentioned just now, when you look at the periods uh, of existing publication, review publication, 
they always used to have a 70, 100, 150, that kind of range. You hardly see, I mean, if you are talking about Q1, Q2, journal, you hardly see like a review come, come out with like 30 references. I would say like, as far as I know, I don't experience, uh, maybe you experience before, I, I, as far as I know, I don't really explain like 20, 30 papers. But if you are considered like mini review, possible mini review, which means uh, the, the length of the review itself is already short and they focus on very, very specific topics. They want possible like 20, 30. Yeah, possible. And then we have next question. Recently, many researchers publish mini reviews. Is this advisable? What the difference in your opinion with a full review? Uh, is, is it mini review and full review? Yeah. Um, okay. Of course, mini review, you because the leg is shorter, man. so the time you take, you, you spend on the mini review is half of the, let's say half of the full review. So you still publish, but the time you spend is less. That's the reason you can see the difference, right? <laughs> the time difference. And then next question is, is systematic review article including this workshop? Workshop, you mean you use? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I will give you some idea later on. Uh, because this is only first part, I will guide you. Of course, not very detailed because time is very short. Ma. We only have about one, half, one and a half hour to I will give you as much as possible based on my knowledge. Ma. And then next question, what about bibliolo bibliometric analysis? Do you consider it a review paper? Mm, but the one I'm not really sure because uh, when whenever this is a review article, I think nowadays you look at the site directory or journal, the paper itself, they will put review on the top. That one is a review. Okay. And then, what is the best possible information management or file management routine for documenting the info gained from the paper? Mm, this one, let me check. Uh, sorry, who asked this question? Uh, from Suhal Abdullah. He because whenever I want to look look at the question or some house, okay, so I cannot trace the question. Okay. But the one is sent privately. I oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe I will send in the comment. Yeah, yeah. The one later I will I will answer. Okay, maybe I, you. What what else we can answer? So I will answer first. Okay, and then next question: Is there any limitation from the journals related to the number of pages of review paper? Sorry, I, 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 I'm a sister, I wish, when I look at the center, I can understand faster. So, sorry, not because of you. I think my, my problem. Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay, we, who asked this question? Sorry, uh, sorry a little bit. I okay. was fighting. Yeah. Uh, Chen, can you, can you copy the question and send to me? At least I can direct look at the question easier. Sure. Because when I go through the, it keep pop up the new message. Okay. Is there any okay good 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 is there any limitation from the journal to the number uh yes this one I will tell you we are not consider the number of pages they always use a number of a word word ten thousand words for example some journal they have a limitation in terms of the word when you submit the manuscript okay not the paper uh, page number because page number is very subjective uh, you can put more figure you can put less figure you can put more papers you can put less papers but when it comes to the word number it's always very easy to uh, quantify. Yeah. And then next question. What is the differences between a short review and a normal review article? Uh, short review actually is just, uh, I mentioned just now, uh, it's a mini review, mini. Small size, small length, maybe half of the normal review. Yeah. And then your refer to, to uh, include in the mini review is actually uh, less compared to the typical review. But personally, myself, I don't publish mini review. I think mini review, most of the time, what I, I experience myself is you read, read uh, another request to the editor of the journal. Say you want to write this mini review, you really are the expert of this field, and you can write very specific scope and address the current uh, topics of the top uh, research. And then next is, what is the minimum number of reference for a review article? Uh, 
as I say, just now, 70 plus to 100 plus is a quite reasonable references. And then, uh, is it possible that a review article can be used for review, a literature review chapter, any tip? Uh, yes, uh, I will cover this one later on in my slide so that you can understand better. Yeah, I mean, make sure. Yeah, doctor, you go first. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. All right. And then next question is, is it okay if we submit the manuscript into multiple journals at the same time? Some of them do it in order to make the publication faster. Uh, uh, never do so. I think as a student, you need fast, I, we can understand, but it will affect your supervisor and also the university reputation. And I mean, if you say 10 years ago, this kind of issue is not so so serious. But nowadays, I think for the past five to eight years, the ethical issue has become a very serious, uh, I would say, like offense. So we always don't submit same manuscript to the two journal at the same time. If you want to do so, you have to, uh, how to say? I would say don't do so, uh, don't do so. If let's say you submit one manuscript, I will I give you my personal experience. Let's say you submit one manuscript now, review manuscript to journal A, and then you wait for the three months. No news, still with editor. And you don't know what to do because you want the paper for graduation. What you can do here is you're thinking about like possible like I will submit the same manuscript to journal B so that I can get a fast response. So if you want to do this, I think the first way is you log into the system for the first submission, you email to the editor say you want to withdraw so that the system has a record. Then whether the reviewer or uh, the editor want to respond to you or not, at least in the system you already say clearly you want to withdraw because the time is too long for you to wait three to four months without doing anything, without send for review. Then I think this is a better way. But don't send to second journal without telling the first journal you want to withdraw because the world is very small. We have a case. My friend's experience, her paper sent to two different journals, same paper, but the reviewer is the same person. You can see the world is very small. Then how we know the reviewer is the same person? Because when the reviewer send, give, give back the comment, the comment directly sent to the editor, telling the editor, the author sent to the same, same paper to two different journals where he was the reviewer at the same time. So yeah, don't do so. <laughs> I also worry because not only student, it affects our reputation as well. And then, thank you, doctor. And then next question, would you mind sharing some tips or steps on how to write a review paper? Yes, uh, coming soon, coming soon. Can we go further? Yes. Yeah, yes, so uh, because I worry like too many questions, then <laughs> I think lunchtime was so cannot finish. Okay, thank you, so I will continue first. I will stop from time to time so that uh, you can ask the question. Okay, uh, before you you start your manuscript writing, I mean the review manuscript writing, there are a few questions you always need to ask yourself. Even I so ask myself, when I ask, when I want to ask my student to write review, I first thing I ask myself, hey, can or no? I mean, I ask my student to write review. Can he write? Do we have a sufficient uh, references for him or her to write a good review, or do we need to have a that, that kind of review in the, in the first place? So some of the questions you need to ask is, is a review article needed here? Is my review related to the current hot topic? Hot topics, I think your supervisor know this one very well because they are in the research field for quite a long time. So they know what is a hot topic currently, and perhaps at the same time, they'll also working on the hot topic, so they will give you more ideas. And the third question, what, sorry, the third question is, uh, what are the differences of my review compared to the recently published review, especially year 20 for the latest three years? You need to tell people if they already have the reviews recently published this year, 2021, then you tell your supervisor or yourself, you think that uh, I can write one more review, but then ask yourself further, what the difference? People just published 2021. You want to write another with 90% of the references similar like this paper published in 2021. That means it's very difficult for you to justify later on when you submit to the journal. They will ask you to justify why your review is so 
needed or timely? And you need to ask yourself first. And third, is there enough new information since the last video to be compiled and sorted out to prepare another uh, variable review articles? Enough information. Let's say the previous review in the topic you want to review, write a review article. Let's say it's a, the last one is about 2019. So 2019, 2020, and 2021, you have about another two years. Can you get more information, more paper in the latter two years to come up with a new review article that can uh, address the uh, knowledge gap of the last review? You need to ask yourself. Then the last one, the last one, do I have the research background to write the review? I mean, for all the students, uh, especially those uh, who are in the fast rate, like they, they, they register PhD without master, I think your, your research background, very specific research background is, uh, I would say like very little. So what you can do here is you always need to depend on your supervisor. Your supervisor will guide you what topic you should focus so that you can write something which is publishable. publishable. So a very simple question here is because just a simple question. If you look at the question, if you were asked to write a review on the best podcast in year 2021, what are the things you must have and need to know? So if you look at the car, you want to write a review on the car, I think either you are the person selling the car, 20 years of a selling sport car, different model, then you can write a good review. Or you are the driver, driver of the sport car, which person. Then you know the weaknesses, the pros and cons of each of the car engine. Then you can write a very good review. So, the, if, the next question, next statement is, if you only have years of experience riding a motorbike, then why force yourself to write something you are not good about the sport car? Focus on motorbikes instead of a sport car. So the message here is very simple. You do what you're good at so that you can do better. Same thing like me, I'm working more on membrane water treatment. If suddenly you ask me to, to write some review on psychology, I have no idea how to start because it's not my field. I always do something I'm capable of and I know where, then I can guide my student to do so. I hope you understand what I want to tell you here, always do something you know, your supervisor also know quite well. Okay, then I go further. I think this is one of the questions the student asked. Uh, you want to write a review, then how your review article can be in, incorporated or integrated with your thesis. I, I, I believe most, most of the students, you want to write something, eventually your thesis can also be, you also can put the information in your thesis. It's, we, we do one like you spend uh, yeah, one and a half month, 12 months to write a review article for the publication. Then eventually your thesis is another topic. Then you waste your, I don't say you're wasting your 12 months writing a review. You still get the publication, one publication. But the thing is, you also need to have a graduation. Mark. Your thesis chapter two is totally different compared to the paper you publish. So it's like you need double effort to come up with another literature review. So that's the thing that, when you want to start to write a review, look at your your own research topic and go through your thesis uh, organization and how much of the review article eventually can be transferred. I would say transfer to chapter two of your uh, thesis, which is literature review. So this is the thing that we always ask the student. Of course, the uh, student may ask, can, we, can I 100% copy and paste your review to the chapter two of the thesis? I can tell you cannot, cannot, because when it comes to basis, this is chapter two actually, in terms of the content, you actually cover something which is very, very simple, very, very general one. So always uh, you have something you will never mention, include in the review article. But if you ask me how much you can introduce, introduce uh, or transfer to your chapter two from the paper you published, I think if you organize well in the first place, I would say 70, 80% of the publication content you can transfer it to the chapter two. Yeah. We, we, our, we have a student, some maybe transfer 90%, except the interaction and the conclusion. Because publication, interaction, and conclusion is something different, right? 
So, I mean, beside these two two sections, the, the body all transfer directly to the chapter two, remember, and the section number, remember it, and the figure number also, remember it. Yeah. So this is uh, what I, I hope I answered the question just now, Susan, can you uh, include the information in your thesis? Yes, you can, but you need to plan in advance. And uh, what is the critical review? Uh, just now, Sudan asked uh, mini review, uh, short review, normal review. Uh, I would say, like, if you look at the publication online, some of them is a, a comprehensive review on what and what, a critical review on what and what, a mini review on what and what. So, what I want to emphasize here is when it comes to a critical review, it's not only summary, summarize it. You also need to evaluate a particular topic of interest. So there are many students, uh, they, are, they are capable, to be honest, they are capable to download 100 papers. 100 paper, I, I done 100 paper, I think it's sufficient for me to write a review. But when you look at the content, uh, it's more or less like a compilation. You compile everything, 100 paper, without giving us the idea like, what is the... Uh, Connection between paper one and two, three and four, four or five. This is something like you don't have a connection and you do have an evaluation among all these hundred papers. What is the thing that you want to do? You can get from the 100 paper already published in the subject topic. So what are the requirements uh, of writing a critical review? You need to read the selected text in detail and then you read further related uh, text so that you can present a fair and reasonable evaluation. So a way, not only summary. Summary, I think, is very low level. You can ask, uh, I think, pioneer student, pioneer project student, degree student, you can tell them, okay, I want 100 papers. Can you uh, give me a summary? I think they, they, can, they are capable to do so because summary one, summary two, summary three. But I mean, in your level, when it comes to a critical review, you have to... Uh, present the evaluation analysis, analysis on the data. Later, I will give you further information about how you go through, how you structure the, the review articles. And I would like to quote an excerpt from a paper published in 1968. Long time ago, people already start to think what is a critical review. So I read here, a review is the documentation or compilation of all significant publications in a specific area with a careful and impartial examination of each individual publication with, I highlight here, interpretation or evaluation as needed in view of an advance in the area subsequent to the publication date. So this is by the concept in 1968. How many years ago? They already know. Not only compilation and documentation, including interpretation or evaluation. If you are interested on this uh, uh, article, this is just a small part from the article I take out, just to let you know this is what we expect from a review. You can always go to this, uh, paper, this uh, published paper, then you download. And further, another recent one in uh, 2009, not recent actually, compared to the 1968, this is a recent one, yeah, 2009. Uh, what it says, why is it true that the, this compilation done in minutes today needed of a competent library search in the 60s? This is wrong to think that a review article can be prepared in just a few clicks. If these clicks will fulfill the compilation part of the definition, the last and essential part of the review, the critical evaluation is absolutely not doable electronically electronically. So this Alan, he already said clearly, because nowadays with a computer, with the internet, I think if you ask your student, uh, can you search 100 paper today for me? I think they can able to search it may maybe in a few hours if they really sit down, download 100 paper. Can do, because it's quite simple with a computer. But how about the critical evaluation among these 100 paper? This is basically not just simply you download 100 paper can do one. You need time to sit down to look at the content, which one is suitable, which one can be used, and so on. 
I give you an example of uh, what we call non evaluative uh, uh, review articles. Achong, uh, very, I think, I think Achong Amma Mutu is a famous head in Malaysia, so I change it to Achong Amma and Mutu. Uh. So Achong incubated 10 ml of the urine at 40 degrees Celsius with 2 ml of sodium and extract XYZ by solid phase extraction, reference one. Then Amma at Gukunis. Glucuronate to form a conjugate with glucuronic acid reference two. Then Mutu use a similar procedure reference with dot 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 dot. So this is a non iterative review. Later I will tell you why we call so. Then the second one, XYZ was extracted by taurine chloroform diethyl ether in hectens with different reference dot 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 continue. So let's say you are just a, let's say you are just a compilation. What you will do? You have 100 papers. Then you just continue up. Uh, heptane, methanol, ethanol, and so on. So this is basically just compilation. You you are able to compile, but you you are not able to perform the analysis. So if you look at statement, the review article should be critical. The statement here: Achon, Achon, Ahmad, Mutu, this, this, this and this, that. So what? Different solvent were used to extract XYZ, taurine, chlorine, uh, chloroform, and uh, heptane, so what? But if you look at this one, if you want to further analyze, I would say like, if you're able to tell people, eventually heptane is much better. Heptane can extract XYZ by 90% of the yield compared to taurine, which is 70%. You actually go one step further, you're able to analyze. I hope you, you know what I mean here. Compilation is always uh, in between. If you want to go to the next level for the critical review, you need to analyze, you need to evaluate the data. Of course, there is one thing you need to be careful when it comes to a review. We cannot include our own data in the review, something which is unpublished. We have a case, uh, it happens before, uh, not not my case, I, I, I experienced before, I think I handled the review before. Uh, the authors include quite a lot of uh, personal data, person data, unpublished data in the review to compare what he reviewed and then compare with that data. So this one should be avoid. You should avoid because your data is unpublished, yet, yet to publish. You only can compare when your paper already published your data, then you can compare your data with the data in the review. Yeah. So review always is something already published the data, but you can give a uh, your your evaluation uh not in terms of the uh, values values and published data okay now it's so uh preparation review preparation conducting and writing choose a topic define your research question so i would like to uh give you a tips here and make sure your research question is not too broad on too narrow manageable because you are student right your time is very short, six semester, you want to finish, sometime you want to finish five semester. Uh, you cannot say like, I download 1,000 papers, I want to review 1,000 papers. It cannot be, this 1,000 papers is a lot, even your supervisor also will not read 1,000 papers. Right? So, but you cannot tell us why I only read 30 papers. Come on, with it. also very difficult. I would say like, if you decide your supervisor with certain scope, which is very nice for the review, then it will be nice. As I said before, based on our experience, based on your experience, you read other reviews, maybe 70 references to 100 plus references, will, will normally is quite reasonable numbers for the reference uh, review article. So begin write down terms that are related to a question. This will be useful for such letter. Discuss your topic with your supervisor. So I would say, Encourage you like always uh, contact your supervisor whenever you don't understand because uh, they are the person which is the closest to you. If you you don't compare your supervisor, we have a case. I I, I tell you my my personal experience. Maybe students want to contact your supervisor. They contact with a friend. I the, but the friend is also the same level, which is a semester one semester one. Do you do you think you can get good idea from your friend, which is also same like you semester one? Maybe okay, it will be you get some advice, but I mean, good advice is uh, hard come from very hardly come from your friends who are also same semester like you. So ask your supervisor. Maybe if you don't want to direct consult a supervisor, you consult your senior. 
those who are like semester five, six, I think they have a better experience. So you have a scope, decide on the scope of a review, how many studies do you need to look at? How comprehensive should it be? How many years should, should it be covered? Yes, as I said just now, I would say that like, you focus mainly on five to the latest one, five years. I mean, in the latest five years, uh, you can have some paper like published in uh, 10 years ago possible, but I mean, focus should be placed in the least recent three to five years uh, if possible. How many sources does the review require sources? Sources means here is uh, how many journals. Uh, my experience, um, I think if you if you're working on the same field for many years, the journals you always the journal titles you always refer to. I would say it will be like eight to ten journal titles. It, it, because this is a, the title, also you always submit your your manuscript to this kind of journal. Eight to ten, I would say is a quite a normal one. But if you say you always publish in up to fifty different titles, uh, possible unless you have very very huge group. Otherwise, my service I maybe eight to ten. We always try this eight to ten. Q1, Q2, yeah. Because this is always we refer the paper from this eight to ten journals. And the database, uh, this one I will not go further. I, I, I think you know you can search for Scopus and or you can search for Science Direct. I think Malaysian students we use to search Science Direct, but in fact there are a lot of uh, journals you can search for, like Springer, Wiley, Terra Francis, RSC, and so on. So a lot, a lot of publications. Elsewhere because it's a semester, so our student most of the time we refer to elsewhere. It, it does not mean that this is the only source you can refer to them a lot. Uh, okay, so uh, conduct search and find literature. When you download 100 papers, let's say you download 100 papers, I think you need to go further, review the abstract and of the research title carefully. You download 100 papers because you based on a search keyword search mark. Possible they'll come out with 100 papers. But you need to go through further to these 100 papers useful for your review manuscript. So, what you can do in the quicker way is you look at the abstract. I think abstract will give you information whether it's 90% related to your topic or maybe nothing to do with the topic you want to cover. I, For myself, I also look at the abstract. If the, I think the abstract is okay. Then I will look at the conclusion a little bit. If I think it's very nice, then I will go through quickly the the body, look at the data quickly. If they are very suitable, I will keep the, the paper as a uh, potential reference in my review because it will save my time. Then then after that, you have a lot of uh, paper you already uh, sorted out. Then you just need to put in the category. Yeah. In there are certain cases, I students prefer to print it up. I, I think nowadays most of them they would like to print out, but uh, I think there are some professor where I know when I went to an office, even up to this moment, they, some of them they still print out very thick copy because they want to write something quicker, they have to the highlight, and if they want to refer to the content, they can refer much faster compared to, com I don't, I know say computer cannot, but, but Hard copy sometimes also quite useful. Uh. I myself, I don't print out everything, but certain case I will print out the first page. Then I write out the notes on the first page. Yeah. Then I know, okay, this paper, this is a topic we can cover. Yeah. If you print out a lot of pages, maybe you, you don't have money, right, for the paper and printing. Yeah. So uh, a way keep track of your search and sort them out. Sort them out, there are a few ways. Your way, maybe you like to sort out based on the folder. You create folder one, two, three, four. But my way, either I print it out, like my students, sometimes they will just uh, use the Excel. They will have a different uh, category. Then he or she will just put the information inside the reference. And when we want to go through, we can start to count each category, how many references. And we even, sometimes we also have a paper, because we want to write a review, right? So we also have a review paper related to the topics. We want to see actually what is the difference of our review compared to the review already published. We want to find the gap from the previous review. Yeah, come up with our own, own ideas. Okay, so maybe I stop for a while.
Okay, thank you very much, Associate Professor Dr. Lau Weijie, for the informative sharing session and task. That's the end of part two. And for and now it's the time for Q&A session for part two. And to all the participants, you may type your question in the chat box or write up your hand before unmuting your audio. So, so for, yeah. yeah. Which question should I ask? Answer first. Do you mind to tell? Sure. Uh, so the first question is from Muhammad Abu Sif. Hello, Prof. How should we write a methodology results and discussion part in the review paper? Thanks a lot. Um, methodology, uh, you know, you don't really have a methodology in the review. Yeah, methodology is mainly for the technical papers. You need to have a methodology. Uh, and then result and discussion. If you really go through the typical review, they don't really have a section with result and discussion. Good result and discussion. You will only see the technical papers. So the the body, I would say the body subtitles is actually quite flexible, flexible when it comes to review. But when it comes to technical paper, result discussion is the part that you cannot miss because you need to have a result, ma. your own result. You need to discuss your own result. So the, the, the organization is different. Yeah, different. Okay. Second question, including significant papers means not including all the papers, right? Significant, uh, you, you cannot finish all the paper if you ask, ask uh, my experience because there are too many papers published every day, every second. Uh, we just select a way uh, from the journal, good journal, and we know that this data is quite significant. We can use it for the discussion or for the review. You you never finish because by the moment you want to submit your manuscript review manuscript maybe the day also come out with a lot of uh, new papers so you you, you will not you will never finish the citing uh, I would say never finish uh. then, then then another person will will continue to write the review uh, so it's fun. Okay, thank you, doctor. So we have one student here, Shihab Khan Nor. You may ask your question now. Unmute your mic. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello, Prof. Uh, hi, hi, so, uh, my question was uh, like, uh, in in my case, there are different methods. Okay, in my research, there are different methods. For example, method A, method B, method B, uh, C, and so on. And under every method, there are like a lot of papers. So when I write a review paper, so I write about the one paper, and then I evaluate and put my comment or in the paragraph i write about different uh, different papers under the same method and then i comment on the overall method uh, did you get my concept oh, okay uh, i would say like okay the, the simple way is when you have a method a method b method c for example for your the, for the paper you want to review i would call, I, I would suggest that you can compare first uh, Make a summary summary on the method A. Let's say there are ten papers. Summary on highlighting the the key result, mm -hmm. and then eventually you evaluate what is the difference between these ten papers, and then give a, a, a I mean the section conclusion on the method A, and then you move to method B, C, and D, and eventually you evaluate method A, B, C, D. Which method actually is the best one? Yeah, I hope I answered your question. Oh, okay. So, sorry. Basically, what you mean is, um, so in the in the paragraph first, I read, okay, uh, author A conducted this uh, uh, research, and then author B found this result. So, this is in first, I summarize the results obtained by the authors, and then I put my comment, the overall comment, right? Instead of commenting based on one paper, right? Yeah, this is will be a best way, lah. I would say, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got my. Also, thank you, Prof. Thank you for the question. And then we have next question. How to choose a good article that can be used in review paper? Any criteria or tips? Okay. Uh, yeah. Good question. <laughs> uh, I, I can tell you, just now I think we are, we, we mentioned about the proceeding, right? Proceeding, proceeding. Proceeding away is, if you ask my, my experience, proceeding is, if possible, don't, don't, don't don't go to a proceeding and use a proceeding publication as a review because first thing is proceeding that always come with very 
uh, simple data and they don't really have a very lengthy discussion. So when, when you use the proceeding paper uh, for your review, maybe you want to go further discussion, you don't see the mechanisms from the paper. So this is the first thing. Uh, we try to avoid, I don't say cannot, lah. if I say cannot, everyone will, will attack me. You try to avoid. And when is when you want to select a good uh, article, I would say like, as I mentioned, you always look look at the quartile lah, instead of impact factor. Impact factor is very subjective, right? I think you look at your research field, you look at the quartile of the journals, I would say like Q1, Q2, always they have a better uh, structure. Uh, uh, content compared to like Q3, Q4, even Scopus. I think as a student, you also realize that some of the students, sometimes my students will come, hey, how come uh, only three pay, pay, pages, they already published one paper, pick three pages. Then they start to think that, hey, how come these three can publish, then why we need to write 12, page, 12 pages? So I think the quality, even the student also can see the differences. Okay, thank you, Doctor. And then we have next question. Is it to set references identified in the selected journal article while writing a review paper. Sorry, which one are this one? Let me copy and paste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. Right? Is it feasible to cite references identified in the selected journal article while writing? What? What does it mean? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I is it feasible to cite references identified in the selected journal? Why? I you mean uh, the the paper is in impressed with a DOI number without a full issue? Are uh, you mean that if this is the case, as long as the paper already appeared online with a DOI, uh you you can cite it, you can cite it because it's citable, citable. As long as there's a DOI, you can cite it. Okay. And then we have next question. What is the structure of a good review article? Uh, I will cover it coming soon uh, in the next part. Yeah, I will cover it. And then next question is, Doctor, in certain cases, I found that the article with bookmark manuscript, is this article could be used as a reference for writing because I also noticed that the paper also been cited. Thank you, Doctor. I shouldn't case can I say? Uh, okay, as, as, as I mentioned just now, as long as the paper appear online with a DOI number, even they just appear today with a DOI, you can start to cite it. Yeah, yeah, citable, citable. And then next is, I intended to write a review paper, however, I have found a review article which is in the same field, just that review paper is published three years ago. Should I write another new paper within the same research area, or how should I proceed? Uh, this this is a question. Yeah, always uh, student. I I give you before I answer this question. Maybe I I tell you what happened to the student concern. There is a student. He when we ask to write the review, because the review takes time. I just I say maybe one and a half year to uh one to one and a half year. So the student worry like. By the time he submit the review, one and a half year, maybe someone submitted the day before him. Then then his review is completely like different. Uh completely like uh have a high similarity. Then what I we always commit the student here is actually if you are uh, consider the ideas, it's very difficult like you write the review today and then somebody from China, let's say, they will write exactly the same content with a similarity like as far as 70 to 80 percent because it's really come from a pure purely different group so the ideas away is uh, not exactly the same yeah the idea so back to the question the student said three years ago someone published before you need to look at the gaps maybe this three years ago this paper they don't address the term scope and again because it's already published three years ago and then you have another three more years Maybe this three more years can give you another new findings, uh, latest development for this topic. Then you can come out with another review possible also. You need to identify what is lacking in the previous review. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Doctor. And then we have another question. 
Hi, Prof. Could you suggest a software for drawing diagram and graph for review paper? I mean, apart from Excel, any software that you can use? Okay. Uh, my friends, I, I because my students, we always use a very simple way. We use uh, PowerPoint, and sometimes we will use uh, other image to incorporate. Then we make a new one. And there are other software you can use, but you need some uh, skill. One of them, my this is what I my friend told me because I consult my friends. I said, "Well, you can write, you can draw a very nice uh, diagram. How you draw the diagram?" He said, "One of the simplest is you use the Adobe. Adobe, I think Photoshop. Yeah. He he said this is the simplest one. But he, also because he always draw. Then he said, if you want to go higher level, you need to use other software." And somebody maybe need to teach you because I also realized some of the illustration is not very simple to draw. You need some skill to draw. Yeah, and I just give another experience. Last time we have a special uh, illustration. We actually pay to somebody to draw the student for architecture. Yeah, we pay to them. We say we want like this, and can you imagine? And then he he draw a few of the version of the illustration. Because I think architect students they have special tools or software to draw, yeah. But we we pay uh, we we pay the, for the service uh, because it's a nice one, uh, nice image. Okay, and then, thank you, doctor. And then next question is, good afternoon, prof. If data had been shown by brochure, conference articles in Japan, is it relevant to set them as references in paper review? If reference list is less than seventy, is it possible accepted for further revise? Thank you. Okay, can you copy paste yeah, possible? Sure. Have you? Yeah, I, I did. Is it feasible to cite reference? Eh? Yeah. This one I think I answered just now, right? Yeah, sorry. Uh one second. Yep, I just sent. Uh, I mean the conference one. Uh, if possible, we try to avoid. We try to avoid because the first thing is, uh, we don't know when they will take down. Sometimes, sometimes because certain reason, maybe after a few years, when you want to access to the conference, uh, proceeding some of the proceeding they don't really have an official DOI. So if you sign it, and I mean we we also think for the future, ma, for the some people want to refer to a review. Let's say uh, five six years when they want to refer to you, then they go to the reference. Then they they realize that they they are no longer able to find this uh, cited reference because they are not the official uh, website or the website is temporary. So we always try to uh, find something which is reliable, reliable, reliable on the reliable form. I, I I think okay. I I think I answered the question. <laughs> okay, and then we have last question here, and then it's long. It's a little bit long, so I will just send it back. Okay. Uh, I I first answer you the first question. Okay. Uh, it's always better if you want to submit to journal A. You need to have a journal A paper as a reference. It's always good. Always good because this show that you meet the scope of the journal. Scope of the journal always good. But there are some journal we also realize that it depends on the handling editor lah. Some handling editor like. They don't care about it. You submit, okay. You fit the scope of the journal. They don't look at how many paper, how many paper in your review come from the journal. They are okay one. Some of them they are okay. Some of them they, they will give you the comment. I would say they will make a very simple decision. Uh, your review has nothing to do with my journal because none of the reference come from the journal. Yeah. Which is quite easy to make a decision. That is why we try to avoid we we cite the journal We will cite. And the second question is, if the targeted journal rejected the paper, uh, actually nowadays later I will show you the my experience as an editor uh, at the end of the presentation. If you are uh, submit to the journal and then the paper was rejected, 
it depends on the editor. If the editor advise you to submit to journal B, normally it's the same publisher. Uh, most likely they will forward the comment from the edit reviewer to the another journal uh, editor. So another journal editor will see the comment from the previous reviewer, even though the journal is different because they are same publisher. But in this case, uh, it's rarely happened. Not, not, not always happens. So it will not uh, dilute your chance to be accepted by another journal. So uh, don't worry so much. Don't worry so much. And then, should we have the last few questions? Uh, maybe I, I answer the last question about the sure. copyright. I use a figure. Do I need to write content letter? Uh, if you, you, I, this is one of the issues. Whenever you publish a review, I think you use a lot. No, you use a lot. You basically use all the figure like, normally from other uh, published papers. You have to get the permit, copyright permission from the center, uh, CCC. Copyright, cop I forget the full name, it's a CCC. Later you can search CCC, copyright center, something like that. And from there you can get the permission online uh, by click. Very simple one. Uh, except some of them, they need you to pay. But generally, Elsevier, Terra and Francis Wiley, most of the figure, if you publish in this normal journal, they are free one. They are free one. You don't need to pay. Just you need to ask for the permission online. Very simple one. So I think I will continue. Now it's already oh, it's about four. So I will continue first. Then we will see what um, others we will. I can answer your question. Okay. All right. Thank you, doctor, for the answer and explanation. Okay. Uh. So review manuscript preparation. There are five steps. Uh, I think most of students, you stop somewhere here summarizing. You summarize only, but you don't go further analyzing and evaluating the pieces. So one, two, three, I think uh, if your supervisor gives you a good topic, I think you can do it because understanding the piece is basically the research what you are going to do. Ma. So you can understand it and with your supervisor assistant uh, help. One, two, three, normally no problem. Four and five, it depends on how you analyze the data and eventually evaluate the piece. I go further, if you if you have all these elements, then you start to build your uh, review article. So when you build your review article, first is uh, from the narrow, from the very wide scope, until the very narrow one, eventually conclusion. So general, normally is uh, understanding the piece, means, uh, the background information, the main differences compared to existing review. I would say like if you look at the review, maybe uh, section 1.0, introduction. So this is the thing you need to put in the uh, review article. Then in the body, for the body, normally you have summarizing and findings highlight. Critically review the approach and the finding of the subject topic. And then this one, normally student, as I say, uh, if element normally you you need uh, time to analyze and iterate. You need to know that the strength and the weakness based on the specific criteria, understanding how the main components interact, connect, and possibly influence each other before you can reach a conclusion. Let's say if you have all these elements, then when you start to write the article, review article, I bring out a simple example which is normally used for the uh, technical paper, technical paper. But I would say like more or less is the same when you look at this triangle, uh, technical paper and uh, review articles, the the flow is the same, same, the flow. So the foundation means the thing you need to do first is a figure and table. If you are if you have a technical paper, definitely you need to have a result, right? You run the experiment, you get the result, and then what you do? You do, you prepare the figure, you plot, you summarize in the table. So this is the first thing you need to do. Without table and figures, oh, it's very difficult to go further. How to write result without the figure? How to write the, uh, how to discard the result uh, without the table and figure information? So this is the thing that you need to do, figure and table first. And then uh, this one is a, I would say like compilation, which is if you look at a review, you have a summar summary and a figure finding highlight, analysis and evaluation. So this is the second thing you need to do. Then conclusion and interaction, and eventually title and abstract. Uh, I, I give you an I give you an example. Uh, what happened to a student? We have a student previously. My experience, the student 
without have anything, the students start to write conclusion and interaction. Without anything, without result. Because for the student, he will say like, okay, my paper has a five section. I already finished two sections, my interaction and conclusion. Then I only have three left. But the, the, the sequence is wrong, the sequence is wrong. You have nothing, then you start to write conclusion instead of interaction. Sequence is wrong. Then I also can say I write the title, I write the abstract, but sorry, no result. So the sequence is wrong. Sequence must be correct. Sequence comes with a table figure first. Table and figure. So I just show you how you come up with a table figure, then we slowly go quickly uh, from a bottom to the title and abstract. So uh, when you have a, how do how you come up with a figure? There are a few ways. First way is uh, you come up with a figure in the review, in the figure format, and or you summarize the result in the table format. So it's always good you have a figure you're on in the review or you have a table you prepare yourself for the review article. So for example, this one, uh, my student prepared, we show different techniques, how to make the membrane and what is the condition to introduce a particle within a membrane different. Uh, we draw the image. This is a not difficult image, but I think you can use draw it using the uh, PowerPoint with an assistant a little bit from other software. And then you can summarize the findings in the table. Also found from my student published work uh, with different material, nanoparticle, nanotubes, nanoship, and we arrange the result properly. I mean, table normally comes with uh, numbers. So you want to, you have a lot of numbers, uh, then the most easier one is you present it in the table format. Yeah, people can see how much how high, how low, how much it increases, etc. So this is how example how you summarize the findings. Then we have another way we analyze we analyze the findings. You can see this is just one of the, our our way to analyze the finding. You have a lot of data here. Okay, all this data actually come from the Excel. All the Excel it actually take a lot of time, but but it's a thing that we have to do because we want to analyze the result. We have an Excel. Then we, we key in the values from each of the references. Then because we want to plot the figures in this way, in this way, we want to plot it. Because eventually we analyze, we want to tell people, what we want to tell people, we want to tell people at this uh, region, basically no one can achieve at region four. And most of the data, what they are able to do achieve is at the region number one. When it comes to region number two, they get a lot of flood water come out but it compromises the selectivity. So we analyze. I, I, I hope you understand what I, I want to show, tell you here. Is you can summarize and you can also further analyze the data. And we also have another work we published recently. We further analyze in terms of the percentage. Okay, how good in terms of the technique and and actually, there are many papers reporting by using my technique, the, the membrane much better compared to another one. But when we further analyze, we tell, we can tell the people, not actually all the paper they're reporting good thing. So good thing is the red color, lah, both are high. Actually, for this technique, just 13% people able to report both are high. The rest, either they compromise one parameter or two. Yeah, so eventually, a lot of paper published but only small number of paper they are able to achieve uh, both parameter high. Yeah. Uh, analyze your analyze. That means this data is is come from your own uh, comparison summary, and you further analyze it, come up with your own ideas. And let's say you already have a figure, and you you once you have a figure, nice figure. I think the discussion. I think the the writing of the body. Of, Based on the figure and table, it's it's not difficult. I assume, uh, more or less, you are, you are you understand quickly what I want to share with you. Then it comes to the interaction and conclusion. So interaction, uh, give you a quick uh, example here is the length of the interaction usually is four to four to six paragraph for review articles. Four to six paragraph. If you have no idea, I uh, how long the paragraph are because your paragraph and my paragraph is different, man. But I would say like uh, if you are very, you have always write a 
art extract for the article, maybe three to four uh, extract length. Yeah, one extract is about 200 to 250 words. So maybe you have a 700 to 1000 words for the introduction. That one is normally quite quite nice already for a review. And then con contents the latest progress of the subject topic. In, 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 it depends on you. You want to show the figure, can like our way we show the figure, uh, how much increase based on the Scopus uh, analysis, and uh, particularly for the past 10 years, the, the number of publication for a specific topic increased a lot compared to the 20 years ago. Then uh, you have to highlight the significance of the review, why is it timely, etc. So if you are working on reviews, I think one part before your, at the, I think before the end of the iteration, I, I suggest you, I encourage you to compare your review with another similar review or relevant review to tell people what is the difference, why your review is uh, needed now compared to another review. Yeah, we always have come out with, the, I would say like you need to maybe highlight two or three reviews very relevant to your review, tell people why is the difference. So this is an introduction. Then it comes to a conclusion. Conclusion, uh, sorry, there, there are many ways, it depends on the general criteria, but I would say like, if you want to write a conclusion, maybe two to three paragraphs. There are some journals I know, they don't allow paragraphs. They only allow single paragraph. So if the journal only allow you single paragraph, then you have to write single paragraph. If there's no guideline, I think two to three paragraph is very nice uh, length for the conclusion. Then in this section, you revisit the critical part of your piece, your finding in the review and your evaluation. So I give you a tip here. It must be brief but concise. No one wants to read an article and then read it all over again in the conclusion. There are cases uh, where the student brought a very good body of the review. Then in the conclusion, few pages of a conclusion. That means it's too long. Conclusion should be something brief and concise. There's a reason why when we look at the other article, I think you look at abstract, look at the title first, then you go to a conclusion. It's suitable, then you keep it for the future use. If these three criteria you go through, not meet your criteria, not meet your expectation, I think you will just, okay, this is not relevant. So conclusion is something like important if you want to uh, let the people understand the entire, the, the key finding of your review. This must remind again why the review was written in the first place. And it must deal with so what and now what questions. Yeah, this is a conclusion. Again, I would like to mention here is there are some, some uh, Review, you will see that before a conclusion, they have uh, like technical challenges, uh, remark, something like that. So it's uh, basically it depends on you and your supervisor how you want to write the review. I mean, because the body of the review is uh, quite flexible. Uh, they, they, they don't say like you must have only have a four section, like the technical paper or five section. Section four must be a uh, design discussion. Section five, you must have a conclusion. But in the re review, Section two can be a something, the title. Section three can be something. We have a case we I've seen before. Maybe they throughout the review they have a like seven to eight different sections. So it's possible. It's possible. Then uh, I assume you, you have a foundation. Then you you know how to discuss then introduction and conclusion. Now it comes to the title and abstract. Title and abstract. So we we look at the title first. Too many unnecessarily words. Too long. Too long. Title too long. And uh, then you may ask me, how long is long? How short is short? <laughs> because your long and my long is different long. Uh. So we, I think the UTN thesis guideline is very nice one, UTN. Uh, they say the title of the thesis must be have a maximum 15 words, 15, one five. So I think we can use that one as a keyword to, uh, as a sort of guideline to help you to come up with a nice uh, title. I believe you, you don't want like the title is too long. For example, now you read the one review, let's say the title is like 25 words. When you read the first word until the 25, I think you cannot remember why, why the content of the title is too long. Cannot digest, uh, very difficult to digest. So I think this is a thing that you need to, need to have keep in your mind. Don't provide enough information about what makes the reviews interesting. The last thing is 
also uh because I I was uh, I'm the editor. Sometimes I look at the review comment also for other authors. The title maybe they give the title, but the title actually not really relevant to the content of the review. So possible happens. But the reviewer normally they will say, I suggest you to change from title A to title B because it's better to reflect the content of the review. Possible. But uh, this kind of thing is actually minor, minor, not not very significant. It means that the reviewer will not reject your paper because your title is not nice or your title is too long. They will comment you. Normally, they will reject you because your review is not nice. The content of the review, too long, too short, cannot get anything. What is the difference compared to previous review? Yeah, it, they always say it's just a compilation of the words without in-depth analysis. Yeah. That one will kill you, that one will kill you. But if you say title is too long, it will not kill you. They will just uh, you, you can revise it something. So you do you don't worry, just if you can good, give a good title, then okay. If cannot, depends on the reviewer because at the end of the day or I will tell you only two to three reviewers will review your manuscript. And if these two to three reviewers they are nice on the day, they are very happy. Then perhaps you have no issue on this review because the reviewer is not like they will send to 100 people to review my only two to three if three two three they are okay the day they are happy then you are safe you are safe so i give you a so i give you a one uh title our title here uh it's very it's actually within 15 words and we say subject modification of polyamide layer does it effective for performance improvement is a review then we have a review different techniques and we tell people actually it's not really effective because based on our analysis and etc so i give you some idea that at least you you can you can ask the question in the title as well okay okay uh again uh frequently ask questions what is the length of the review manuscript uh it's the best way, it's not based on the numbers of the pages. The best way, based on the guidelines of other journals, is I, some of them, if they have a guideline, they set the limitation, it's 10,000 words, 10,000 words. If there's a limitation, if not, I think you can go study further, like 15,000, 20,000, possible. How many figures and tables are allowed to, for a review manuscript? Again, it depends on the journals. Like the journal I handle, CHARD, uh, figure and table in together, you cannot more than I think 15. The journal I handle, CHERD. Table and figure number, you cannot more than 14, 14, sorry, 14. So there are cases, uh, I received the information also, they request, they say my review is very nice, I have a 16 figure. Uh, you can put 16 figure, but before you submit, you have to request the permission by email, normally by email will do, email to the journal. They say I have a review more than 40 figures required. Uh, normally they will consider because of the review. Uh, my screen, my our journal CHRD, they will not reject. They will say, okay, please go ahead because just uh, one or two extra. Month. So okay. So how many reference right should be quoted? Uh, very subjective, but I, I I have to give you a number. If I say subjective, you will say like your doctor law gives something not useful. So. 70, 80 to 100 plus is a very nice number of references. I mean the reasonable number. What is the number of co-author for a review of manuscript? Uh, nowadays, this is a, something I think somehow means it's a good number. You have a supervisor. You have a core supervisor. You have yourself. You have your senior maybe helping you. Your supervisor have a core operator. I would say like... If you can manage five to six, it's a very nice uh, five to six author per paper, very nice number. Uh, of course, we have a case only three, even myself, uh, including myself, three also possible. But if you have a 10, 15 per paper, unless the scope is very huge, so scope possible. But if the scope is like not other people, uh, other standard scope, mm, you put 10, 15 authors, I would say like it's a little bit too much. Some journal I would tell I can share with you is some journal if you put more than ten, more than ten, you have to come out with another letter statement. Uh really indicate uh each of them the contribution. Because 
for them, more than 10 is something like it's a high number, more than 10. Yeah. So it, you can submit, but I think maybe some way, like when they go through a technical check, they will return to you. They realize more than 10, please come out with a statement. Why you have to, you, you have more than 10 authors. Okay. Then the uh, last one also, some students ask, we, we have a case that happened before in Malaysia, I would say. A student become a corresponding author. Can I student become a corresponding author? Uh, basically, uh, uh, if you ask UTN and Malaysia University, student cannot be a corresponding author because because one day if someone want to answer the review after five years after you graduate you become husband you become housewife you become insurance agent who going to answer the question? You you know what? Not even nowadays we have a comment come from uh, maybe 10 years ago. People ask us the question. If you are the corresponding order, you still can answer because you are still in the university. Ma. You're older, of course, 10 years older. But your, your student maybe already become housewife with three children. They they will not answer the question for everyone. Yeah. So student, in this case, main corresponding, first corresponding order should be your supervisor la, because they guide you. Ma. Okay. So I have uh, one last part. This is I uh, temporarily. Uh, maybe, I think maybe I go further. I finish first, then we. Yeah. Okay. So uh, review my script proposal. You let's say now uh let, maybe now some of the students you already have a review my script ready. You you just waiting for the journal to submit tomorrow maybe or tonight you want to submit. So there are a few guidelines you need to take care of. Uh, some journal you cannot submit it online. Because it's a review article, you need to have a proposal. Proposal. I give. I bring up some of the journals. I highlight already. I uh, this journal. Author who wish to contribute a review paper should send an abstract and manuscript outline to one of the editor prior to submission of the full paper. That means you cannot submit even you are very good without the permission of editor cannot. So what you can do? In this case, for this journal, you just need to email, send an email to the editor, get the approval. But you cannot submit the email to say you have a review. You need to provide the abstract and manuscript outline. Outline means section one, section two, section three, and so on, etc. For the review uh, editor. So this is for this journal. And there's another journal, higher requirement because this is much better journal. Critical review, 10,000 words. You cannot simply email it because I was a uh, I, I haven't submit review to this journal, but I was a reviewer for this journal before for the review proposal. It's uh, I when I received the review proposal to review uh you the review proposal come contain all these things one two three four until eight. So it's like how many pages? I think fifteen pages, fifteen pages just to submit the proposal to the system and then the editor will assign two reviewer just to review a proposal, it's not the full paper, review the proposal, justify all these things. So I was the only experience one time before like this for me. Uh, yeah. And then eventually I agree that I say it's a nice review. And then the author sent the full proposal, I mean the full review article, I think two months later and the editor sent to the same person who reviewed the proposal again. Yeah, so it depends on which journal you want to submit, then you need to go through the guidelines. And like this uh, reviewer, uh, sorry, this journal uh, highlight here, most reviews are invited by the editor, but proposal for the reviews are welcome. If you are very good or you are, you know the editor, I think they also know you are a capable person. Actually, uh, they will send you the email. They say our uh, journal lack of this kind of a topic. And can you re write a review for our journal? Yeah, this is a very nice one. If you if you get the invitation from the editor, right? Good journal. Yeah, but but this kind of a uh, chance is a uh, very low uh, normally unless you are very powerful uh, authors. Otherwise, uh, our for our level, what you can do is uh, you send a proposal or you try some journal without require the proposal. But nowadays, again, uh, there are many journals, many journals, especially Q1 and Q2, review articles, review manuscripts, 
you cannot really submit directly. If you ask me, let's say there are 10 journals, Q1, Q2, how many you can directly submit without, without proposal? I would say maybe 20% only, 80%, you either need to email, invited by the editor, or you need to send the proposal. Yeah. So, so the chances is getting diffi more difficult and difficult. Yes. Yeah. And okay, uh, frequently asked question. How to choose the journal for review manuscript submission? How to choose? Uh, you look at your reference, sorry. You look at the reference in your manuscript, then you will see how many uh the the, the journal titles mostly you, you cite for your review article, then you can choose from the based on the idea on the reference you cited. It's a good idea normally. There's another way, uh, Elsevier side direct, they will help you. There's uh, one like journal suggestion or journal suggester. You just copy your abstract, put inside, then you click button submit, then they will list out the journal for you. Journal one, two, three, ah, this is a journal suitable for you to submit. But there one is a guide only guideline. So when should I submit the review proposal to editor? When? Uh, I think when you are about 90% ready, when you write a review, about 90% ready, I think you can submit to the email to the editor, say, uh, I have this review, and my review will be ready in the, in within two months. I think that the time is a very nice one. You don't, don't submit when you only have abstract and title, because there are a lot of uncertainty. Right? Maybe after one and a half year, you still cannot come out with a baby. Maybe. Yeah, it's a very secret. So maybe 90% you can submit. Uh, don't submit yourself, uh, I mean, Ask your supervisor to email uh, to the editor, say, I want to submit with this code and we think that it's suitable for your journal. Yeah. No, I would say they will always re respond to you because editor is a responsible editor to reply the email. Yeah. It's a responsibility of them to reply. How long do I need to wait to get the feedback from the review proposal? Uh, very quick, very quick. If you buy email, I would say like, like our journal, uh, we have a managing editor. She she always check the email. Yeah. She always check the email every day, almost every day unless she on leave. Uh. Then uh, you I would say few days you will get a response. Other other journal, if you buy email, I think few days you definitely will get the response. Yeah. But you don't send during Christmas time, uh. people, <laughs> uh, like two weeks holiday, three weeks holiday, you expect Christmas next day people reply. So the timing is also important timing. So I go for the mainstream submission, uh this is the thing you need to take care of because it's a sharing like you have a manuscript until the end you need to make sure your paper can be accepted. So before the submissions, you prepare a cover letter, novelty statement, conflict of interest. I think your supervisor maybe already have this uh, checklist for you. Checklist. If your supervisor doesn't have a checklist, then you can refer to the journal guide, uh, author guide, guideline. Then they will also uh, lead you one by one, but it's always you have an idea of what you need to prepare and then during a submission and then uh, what you can expect after the submission. After the submit the, the measure, uh, there's a one one uh, things I want to tell you is patience is important during peer review process. Uh. You, if, if you are very lucky, maybe one month, two months, you get a response. If you are, your life is also maybe three months, it's average, you get a response. If you're waiting too long, your life is not good. Uh, there's a way like if you keep to want to uh, wait further, then you can email to the editor, uh, ask the progress. Like in our case, uh, someone if they ask, we will respond to them. Yeah. And, and then uh, this is something you can expect out from the start you submit until the decision made. I mean, uh, the first decision made typically three to four months. Three to four months it, it's quite normal. Uh. But if you are pay you submit to the pay journal, pay journal. I mean they really need your money. <laughs> Can I say so? They really need your money. Uh it will be very, very fast. Very, very fast. Maybe if you look at some journal, they put day seven to fourteen days, you will get the first decision comment with a comment. Seven to fourteen days, just a uh, less than two weeks. Uh, that one is a normal pay journal. The journal normally you submit free. The editor also doing the job for free. Review also doing the job for free. And each time we send the review, 
uh, may speak to all, for all, if you were to comment, uh, our date is uh, 21 days. Our date given to them is 21. So it's about three weeks. So including checking, including the time they waiting, we wait for them to accept. And some of them, after the deadline, they don't want to give them the comment uh, possible because we are editor, we always experience. Maybe you keep remind them, maybe one week you remind two times, second week you remind two more times, then they start to respond to you. So end up, three, I would say three months is uh, quite normal, uh, quite normal. Yeah. So if you really want to push very hard for yourself to publish within one or two months, uh, very, just, just give you extra time. Uh. <laughs> I also can, we, you see, I'm, I'm also editor when I submit to other journals, nothing I can do, really nothing I can do. I also, I tell myself, we, I, we, we, we have to wait, because this is a process. But when I was an editor, I'm an editor, I handle the people journal, I, 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 speak, I know the struggle, the difficulty of the authors. I always do my job very quick. When I receive today, maybe next hour I'll listen to review. So, under review. I always, I always do so. I always do until this moment. I always do so unless I'm not free today. I do it next day, next day. But I will not like one week, two week die with editor. That why is uh, for me. I would say like the editor or purposely what to want to do anything or they're just too busy maybe. So uh, when you when you get the decision letter, there are a few things that you can expect from the editor. So this is a latest publication from uh, Rona, very famous uh, professor from, uh, I think, USA. Uh, if you want to study further about the content, you can download here. But what he put in here is, uh, you can expect some few things like the decision. The first the aspect is it's very real. Uh, my, my personal experience, we never have this one. Uh, that means you submit, then the reviewer come back, two of them are excellent, very good, As immediately published. Uh, we haven't, myself, I haven't uh, experienced before. Normally, what we will experience is like minor revision. Uh, they will give you, uh, I think one, oh yeah, one month, one month. Minor revision is typically one month. Major revision typically is three months. Uh, if you need more than three months, especially during pandemic, like, like, like what experience in the world now, uh, you can send the email again to the system, the request extra time. Uh, they always give you extra time if you request. You don't do it. Let's say today is a deadline, then you miss out the deadline. Tomorrow you go to request. Because the system already stopped for you to submit mother, you, you request cannot. So immediately, I think when you receive the decision and you think that you cannot uh, complete on time, uh, maybe next day or next few days, you, you just request. Say, instead of three months, we really need more time, uh, four months or five months. Give them the date, they will give you one. They will give you one. And and then a uh, very sad one, and this one is crying. Uh, reject, but try later with another paper. Reject and never darken our door again. So this is crying. And there are cases like this. Uh, question mark, major revision and re review, re review, reject and resubmit. Uh, there are many people uh, also confused. Reject and then resubmit. What does it mean? Are we reject? Then how to submit? Because when you resubmit, it means that you resubmit with a new number, manuscript number. But when you resubmit with a new manuscript number, all the comment from the previous reviewer give it to you. You have to prepare respond to the reviewer comment separately. And the same editor will handle and they will send to the same reviewer most of them, most of the time. But your manuscript is considered a new manuscript if you submit to the same journal again, again. But if you reject, they say you can resubmit, but you resubmit to journal B. Then you don't need to provide the response. You can resubmit anytime you want. Okay, so this is something like sometimes people confuse. They ask, uh, how? Uh, then that does it mean I have a better chance? Uh, my experience to tell you is a uh, few years, not few years, I think last, last, two, last year, last year. We have a case reject and resubmit. We address all the response, resubmit. Uh, but eventually the review also don't agree uh, our response action taken so it's still at the end rejected yeah so it's very sad but you just accept because no one is perfect right we, we improve everything 
Okay, so uh, I have a few few things I want to share with you. Uh, this is what normally I want to emphasize. This is for my interface as an editor. Uh, first thing you need to make sure is, uh, because review article always says one big issue is uh, similarity, similarity. Similarity is very high, let's say I cover the important one. Uh, uh, editor, we always have uh, one software theory. Actually, whenever you submit a manuscript, our interface, our system, they will generate a report for us already, 15%, let's say for this article. Your review maybe, if you don't check it properly, could be 30%, 40%. So our our action is normally, if the percentage is too high, percentage is too high. We will not send to the review, we will immediately reject with a reason, uh, high similarity. That means you lost a chance for this journal because of the similarity, not because of the content, yeah, because of similarity. I can show you what the report, are. let's say I click this one, 15 per, uh, I click this one, this is normally the report we will see, la. they will highlight for us. It's actually very similar like the uh, turning in report, turning in uh, where you did subscribe for the student. This one I use an I identifier, and I identicate, identicate. And uh, you can see here, they, they will give us the report, okay, this paper submitted 12%, three come from this, 1% come on here. So, uh, yeah, you need to make sure your percentage is low. Uh, how low is low? Uh, we have a case. Uh, based on my experience and my what I talk to other editor and my friends, I think like 12, 15% is uh, something we can accept. We can accept for our journal. I think journalists also can accept. Very difficult to get like less than five, very difficult. And for the review, I think you also have to make sure it's a less than 15% similarity. Uh, uh, my, my, my experience when we handle a waste of high similarity is the, the paper working on simulation and modeling because they, they use a lot of equations, maybe 30, 40 equations in one manuscript and the way they describe the equation more or less very similar. So the, normally simulation modeling similarity is, is quite easy to get high one. So you have to pay more attention when you are doing simulation modeling. So uh, my, this is the last part, last frequently asked question I sent to you. Tell me how long do I need to wait to get a comment from the reviewers? Uh, if you are, if you have a good luck, I will say one month plus you can get the response. If you do have a good luck, maybe like like us normally three months is a quite typical uh, three months. Can I send a email to the editor to ask about the manuscript status? Uh, you can, you can. Actually, if you look at the system, you submission system, you always you have a one uh, function for you email, email. The one email means email to the editor la. You can email, but you don't push the review editor so hard la. I mean, after one week, you only ask them, I uh, what is the status? Uh, only after one week. Uh, I think if you are waiting for like month, one month, still with editor, I think. You can uh, you can ask nicely uh, nicely by email, yeah. Because they are still you you don't want to trigger them, right? I think ask nicely. Then how many reviewers will be assigned for the manuscript? Uh, very subjective. Uh, our journal CHRD and uh, water reuse we always uh, need three reviewer comment. Normally we always need three, but uh, if we think the quality of the article is nice, we first we will assign two reviewers and. If both of the reviewer, because ourselves we also go through the mainstream. Uh, if we think it's good quality, I think we assign only two. And if the both of them are positive, then it will be two reviewers, then we will make decisions. If uh, one of them is positive, another is very negative, then it's a time we need to appoint another third reviewer. And in this case, if we appoint a third reviewer, it will take longer time. Uh, it will take longer time because we you need to restart again the review process and then another 21 days you need to wait for. That's the reason why uh, I would say like it's not uh, confirmed how many reviewers, but our way is two to three. Uh, my experience, we have a case of up to seven reviewers for our papers possible, but up to 10, uh, we have never experienced. We have only experienced maximum seven, seven reviewers, seven set of the comments. When we receive the review comments, in, when you copy in the word file, I think five to seven pages, just a comment only, just a comment. Okay, so uh, I think this is the last two slides. Uh, what leads to the acceptance? Attention to the details. 
and check and double check your work. Uh, actually, myself and my student, we not only check and double check, I think we check many, many times, many rounds, because we, I think it's our way to make sure it's good before we, we, we submit, right? So we check many times because we also do one like we submit then the review comment or your your figure is not right, your caption is incorrect, the reference is missing. So we check actually many times. Consider the review comment. So most of the time if the review gives you a comment, uh if you, you're able to revise, you just revise up based on the comment. Yeah, you can defend, but if you defend half of the comment you don't want to do because of this and then half of them, I think the review also not happy, right? So I would say 80-90% of the comment, you should respond to the reviewer by taking the action. If English must be as good as possible, your supervisor can check for you, you can pay for the service. Uh, presentation is important, take your time with the revision. When it's a major co major revision, the editor gives you three months. Because the editor also looks at the comment, it's a very long comment, uh, you need a lot of time. Then you submit within one week. It's not it's not daily la. You have a lot of things to do, but you squeeze it in one week. You cannot really come up with a good quality of the revised manuscript. So acknowledge those who have helped you new origin, original, previously unpublished. Critically erase your own manuscript. And lastly, ethical rules must be obeyed. Ethical rules, maybe student you don't see the see the effect. I will give you an example, uh, not myself, but it's my for my friends' experience. Uh, the paper submitted with a uh, few author names, few author names. And I think you know whenever you submit a manuscript, uh, they will send an email to acknowledge all the authors. And it was very bad. One of the authors sent the email to the editor saying he didn't write anything on the manuscript. But the manuscript already submitted. So it becomes a very serious issue because in this case, the author is supposed to be uh, someone contribute, but eventually the author said, I don't contribute anything. The person just put my name without my knowledge. This is for my fair experience. I can say, and you have you have to answer because when it's, when it's already raised this issue, the editor certainly need your answer. I think you either need to write the email or you need to withdraw, then they will give you a sanction, something and then you cannot submit again. So always uh, do, do your best heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I cannot say it will not happen, it will happen, but uh, I think every day happens that maybe not within your circle, maybe outside, but it, it happens to my friends, yeah, possible. So my last slide, uh, I, my, this is my, my last slide. Uh, hope for the best. When you submit the manuscript, you manuscript, I think the thing you want is uh, acceptance. If, if you do submit, you aim for the decision, right? I think you submit for the acceptance. And except for the worst, worst means you submit, but the reviewer don't even want to send for the review, the editor. They just reject without review possible. So it's also possible the worst case is you send for two journals, three journals, they keep reject, reject you without review or with a review comment. So this is the worst thing will happen. But if you if you keep trying, you improve your manuscript content with a comment given, you will eventually lead to the acceptance. Yeah, eventually. Just the thing sometimes the student cannot wait is the time. Uh, time. Time is very short for the student, especially. They already have six semester and you need to do a lot of things to insert. So you already want to push certain things. Yeah. But if your time is allowed for you to improve, you submit because for the long term, for the long term. Uh if you if you come back after 10 years in the future, you come back to look at what you have done today, 10 years before. If the thing is good, I think it will be good. And your next generation, your children, your kids, will, they will also look at your publication. Because what is published, forever is there. Forever is there. There's a reason why, that's why I show you this one paper, 1968, even today, 50, 60 years ago, uh, in the future, we still can download it. We still can download it. So I think that's uh, all for my presentation. And I give my email address here. Uh, of course, uh, if you have any question, you can email me and I, I hope I can answer.
but it's, but again, I was trying to tell you, it's a, it's a way of learning. Uh, even at this moment, actually, we're still learning. And if you are uh, ask my experience about the impact factor, 2008, 2009, we know that's an impact factor, but we, do, we don't care about impact factor. Eh. Surprisingly, I tell my students, uh, yeah, yeah, correct, correct. We have an impact factor, but at the time, we only like, we we submit to this journal because we always refer to this journal uh, as our reference. That's why we submit. But the impact factor is not like main issue. But nowadays, I think there are a lot of factors, uh, to be honest, from here and there, who pressurize you, <laughs> and you need, always need to go for higher and higher. Uh, something we need to endeavor uh, change the uh, outcome. Uh, I I wish you all the best. Uh. Maybe next year by this time, maybe you already have first review. <laughs> Your fun letter. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Associate Professor Dr. Lawijia, for the informative sharing session. And should we have our Q and A session now? Yes, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. So now it's the time for a Q&A session and to all the participants, you may type your question in the chat box or raise up your hand before unmuting your audio. And so we have the question from YX. Prof, is it important to short out the overarching teams and sub-teams into a table form first before converting them into discussion? Can, can, can you copy the, the sentence, yeah, sure. please? Sure. Oh, it's a very long one. Yeah. Mm, one second. Um, Chen, is it Chen Yi Leong? Is it? Chen Leong, yeah. Okay, let me let me study. Uh, this one I answered already, ma. The the published review and targeted targeted journal as well. This one I answered just now. Yeah. Oh, one second. Okay. Don't know. Uh, I think our way is we in our mind we already have uh, like in this review how many tables we want to come up. I think the first thing is the idea how many summary table you want to make or comparison table you want to make. Then from there, roughly let's say this review you have a tools uh, summary table you really want to prepare. Then from there you already know okay how many references you need to put inside the table. Yeah, the table. You cannot be like only two or three reference in one table. It seems like it's not necessarily if only a few papers. But if you're able to really find the connection between the papers, uh, between the papers published, uh, four, five or six or even ten, you find the connection of them, they put in the table format. I think it will be helpful for you. Yeah, you don't need to like create a lot of the figures or tables yourself. You will eventually review is you still mainly based on your the the table and figure, especially the figure, it's still based mainly from the uh, published work. Okay, and then we have next question. Hello, Prof. How can I minimize paraphrasing, especially when I write a review for methods which are not easily paraphrased, for example, chemicals or names of techniques and etc. Is it, is, 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 is about the plagiarism? Are you mean plagiarism? Paraphrase. Can you copy paste? Yeah, sure. One second. Because uh, I I keep uh check the check on it's a uh, pop up pop up again a new message. Yeah, sure. One second. Okay. Okay, mind. Uh, okay. It actually, it's a it's the same thing. When you have a technical paper, I think uh we allow like ten to fifteen percent similarity, right? This ten to fifteen percent, I would say most of the time is come from the methodology method. So method is some part which is wait, let's say me, I make a membrane. Another student also making the same similar membrane, just change the chemical name. So pregnancy is always come from the very easily come from the methodology. So in your case. Uh, what I can suggest you is, you when you write it, you, since you already know this is a part that you have a, a lot of similarity, right? Then you you can change the sentence first, use your own uh, language, try your best, and eventually before you do the submission, you can go to the uh, 
uh, turn it in report. And turn in report will highlight some of the sentence will give you the high similarity. Then from there, you change the highlighted sentence. Uh, will be faster way. Yeah. And then the next question. Prof, in the analysis and evaluation section for review paper or technical paper, is this section allow author's own perspective as a whole? Uh, it, when it comes to erasure, it is okay. It is okay. Uh, what I want to say to you just now, I say to you just now is, when you present the figure, let's say you have a, you have a data in the value, in let's say a meter per second, which is purely come from your new finding, you cannot include that kind of data because it's an unpublished data. But when you analyze people, you come up with a percentage, how much increase, how much, how many paper perform poor compared to another set of data in terms of the percentage of, uh, num I mean, the number figure, that one is okay, possible. And the next question, is it okay to cite other authors to review papers in my review paper? Yes, yes. Uh, especially you can put mention it in the introduction. Yeah. All right. So, and then is it necessary to do a graphical abstract for the review paper? Is it graphical abstract for technical paper only? And what is the criteria for good graphical abstract? Uh, okay. A graphical abstract. It depends on the journal. Some journal without graphical abstract, you cannot submit. Uh, I give you an example. One of the publisher is a. Uh, ACS, ACS uh, publisher. Without graphical abstract, uh, that means the submission is considered incomplete. You cannot click the button of submission. I would say like graphical abstract nowadays, uh, journal always ask you to include the graphical abstract because it's the first thing you will extract the reader to read your manuscript. If you're able to prepare a graphical abstract, very nice one. I think the picture always say better compared to the word. Yeah. We like the picture and we are attracted by the picture more than by the sentence. So there's a thing that uh, journal always want to extract you at a, in the first place. Right? That's why extract, the graphical extract is a way, uh, thing that you can, you must include and encourage to include if some journal, they give you optional. And why is the criteria? If you look at the graphical extract, most of the time, they do have the sentence one. They do have a sentence. And we have a see some of the graphical extract, which is also very funny, funny one, like a cartoon. They put a cartoon inside the graphical extract. They put a very funny icon. <laughs> yeah, because it's really able to attract, attract the people to read, go through the paper. All right, so we have our next question. The writing process for a review paper is really tiring, especially studying the discussion part of the technical paper. Sometimes are not really understandable. Is there any motivation tips from Prof? Thanks. Yeah, you, I, uh, yeah, I, I know your struggle because I'm now a student. Uh, especially you are a degree student, you study a lot of subjects, and suddenly you study master PhD, which is very narrow about the scope of the research. You only study one thing which is very go deep inside. So sometimes the mechanism you are not familiar with it. You go through again and again. You cannot digest. I was. I can say. Can I say that you cannot digest? You know there is a something like very nice one, but when you want to take the content, how on, how on, because you cannot digest the content. I would say the, the only thing you can do uh, solely uh, That's why we say if you say you want to come out the review nice review in three months, if you are a new student very difficult. But if you if you able to get the help from your supervisor, especially your senior senior. I think they, their understanding is much better because they have at least three years or two and a half years better than you understand on the subject topic. Yeah. So your supervisor definitely, I think when you go to your supervisor, they will teach you one. But the thing is, if you keep asking them, why this mechanism like this? Uh, I think you ask one or two, okay. But if uh, you keep asking the mechanism, 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 I think they will just say, uh, you spend your time first before you come. I think they they also want you to learn ma. It's a learning process. You learn first. If you don't understand, you ask. I think you always you only ask your supervisor. I think something which is you really want to ask. You don't ask all the equation, questions you want to ask. <laughs> but because some supervisor they they don't really want to answer all the questions. I think you know lah. Human right? Every human is different. They, they only okay. Come two questions. 
the question again next channel. Okay, thank you, Doctor. And then hi next question is hi doctor, when we submit our review paper, the editor said that our review paper has thirty percent similarity using identicates. However, when we use the in, we got five percent similarity. So how about this issue? Should we clarify to the editor? Uh okay. Uh the, the thing is because similarity in the turning in is depends on your setting my setting setting uh the setting by default is very nice by default unless you change the setting to like every 30 word starting similarity then it counts similarity so setting is very important so authenticate the one already by default so we don't really know the setting but i think the setting is a quite standard which is a, also the default by the uh turn it in so turn it in uh there are some so we know they when they want to submit the, the turning in report to the office for first defense uh first assessment uh they, they try to change the setting measure the similarity is low but in fact the similarity can be very high because the setting they change it yeah after maybe one paragraph then they consider paragraph one sentence no paragraph so this kind of thing you need to be careful lah. yeah i mean in terms of the just how the students say, do we need to uh, tell the old, uh, editor say our turning in is a uh, fifteen, your identity case certain? Uh, I think not, uh, not really necessary uh, because the system, the editor like me, when we open is already by default. Uh, the set, the, the setting. So if you question, then they will just show you the report is the same thing, one. Yeah, which is also thirty percent. All right, thank you, Doctor. And then next question is, is if one journal reject a research article, can we apply it in another journal? Uh, if they reject you, uh, I think nowadays rejection is very common. Right? <laughs> even, even my, even myself. Uh, sometimes we also scratch our head. How come? Uh, we 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 sign maybe thirty percent from the same journal. Then they say the editor say it's out of the scope. Then we will scratch our head. We ask ourselves. Then why what is the scope then? What is the scope? So uh the thing is when the rejection happens, uh no problem. You always have a second time try other journals one. So just uh, just one thing I want to tell you is uh, what we always do is if let's say the reviewer reject you with uh, some comment, I think you can go through the comment because some of the comments they are very useful and you can collect it uh maybe in a uh, simple quiz or simple chain on the caption or sentence. Then then you just revise it based on the comment, even though it's rejection. Because you, you improve the quality of the manuscript, then you submit for the next version. It will be better than the first version. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. And then next question. Hi, Doctor. Usually, what are the maximum number of revisions are required for a typical review article? Uh, uh, usually, uh, you submit and then there's a review, then they give you a comment asking you to re revise, revise. Then you revise. If you address 90% or 95% of the comment properly, you send it back. When you send it back, we consider R1, revision one. And the reviewer editor normally will send it back to the editor because we also don't want to take so huge responsibility. Ma. Like, like myself, or actually we can make decisions sometimes, but we also need to think from the reviewer side because reviewer they spend the time to review the manuscript. Then at the end, they don't even see the correction. Then you make a decision that accepted. So maybe they are not happy also. So what we myself I don't know how to do. What I will did is I will do is I will send it back to the same reviewer, asking them is it okay the correction made. Normally they will come back with a very short sentence. I'm satisfied, or the author done an amazing job to revise the manuscript. Accepted now, oh yeah. So this is a thing that so normally after R one, most of the time you will get accepted if you address ninety ninety five percent properly of the comments. But of course there are certain cases you need to go for second round, which is R two. You know some reviewer they really particular on certain issue. When they say comment A, if you say you don't want, they they will keep attacking you on the same comment. Why you don't want to revise? I think it's very necessary. I think it's a compulsory to revise based on the comment because this and then, then possible, they will send it back again, second round, then you need to revise. 
So each time you can see each round of the revision, the comment getting less and less because it's the same reviewer. Yeah. It's the same review. All right. Thank you, Doctor. So, yeah. Next question, good evening, Prof. I'm required to write a review to be published in book chapter. Is it the same as full critical review or mini review? Okay, book chapter is also review. It's correct. Uh, yeah, it's a good question also. Uh, sometimes the student uh, cannot see the difference, the impact, the impact of uh, published in a book and published in a journal. Publication in a book, uh, they, they consider book chapter, I mean in UTM, in UTM. Your review article published in a book chapter is considered book chapter. Your review article published in the journal is considered review article in the Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 journal. So the impact is totally uh, quite different. And another thing I would say compare in terms of incentive, I think the student also know about incentive, right? Uh, when you publish in Q1, Q2 in a journal, you got, I mean the review, you got the incentive as a student from the, our school, SBS. And if you publish a review in book chapter, uh, I don't think now they give you an incentive. Huh? Because book chapter always come more easy for you to publish. Because the review process is actually based on the invitation. Let's say I today I edit a book, I invite you. So you directly get invitation to write the review. So as a friend, because I invite you, do you think the chances me to reject you is high or low? It's actually very, very low because I personally invite you. If I if I further personally reject you, I don't think it's a nice one. Man. Yeah, you can see the difference. So review always good to have a book chapter, but if you can do it in a journal, it will be much better. Okay, and then we have last two questions here. Uh, I wish to ask how many subtopics to be attend in a typical review or how many research questions? Uh, yeah, it's very difficult to answer question. It's still back to the the content like what is your scope and your research field, your research field. That's why I say when it comes to the review, the body, I mean interaction, definitely you cannot miss out the interaction, you cannot miss out the conclusion. Mark. I mean, besides this, the content, the the body of the review. It depends on how much you want to cover in your review, how big the scope. Yeah. Yeah. This one very, very difficult. But I would say like if you really want me to come up with a number, I would say you need it, need to have a like, just like a simple when you write a thesis. I think the lecturer or the panel always say, what is your purpose statement? Purpose and how many you want to address? I think for the PhD, easily you have a three different problems and more or four different problems, which is very main one. I think when it comes to review, perhaps you also need to think about maybe I have a three or four main questions. I really need to come cover it in my review. Yeah. I mean, the main one, uh, you don't like put very small, small one, you also need to consider as one. I mean, the main, main big one. Okay, and then. Hi, Prof. Is it necessary to start research articles from Q1 and Q2 journals if the target to submit a paper in Q1 or Q2 journal? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I'll give you a very example. Uh, I never publish in Nature or Science. Uh. I never publish because my level is not there, Nature and Science. Uh, but when I look at the publication in Nature and Science, they use, usually they only have a very little number of the reference. I would say like 15, 20, but when you look at their reference cited, they always cited science, nature. They hardly, hardly you will see them cite other than this very, very high impact factor journal. So I think this is the, I think they also realize that when they want to submit to very high quality of the journals, the only thing can help them is their reference also must be very, very high quality to to on par with what they are doing. Man. It cannot be like you submit to nature, but all the time you refer to the proceeding. That means you use a proceeding quality to submit to the nature or science. So I think there's a, some, some something you need to really take think about it. But I would say like if you consider your reference is like most of them Q1, Q2, that means you will refer to something which is good quality. Come out with a review. 
and then uh, doctor, we have a few more questions. Like, okay. yeah. yeah. So next one is, hi, Prof. If I, if I want to take the content from my review paper to the TC chapter two, should I rephrase all the sentences? Uh, you want to take the content from TC? Can you can you copy the sentence? Oh, sure, sure. One second. Well, some of them I I cannot get what you say. That's yeah, sure. If I want to take the content from my review. If I want to take the content for my review, uh, uh, basically UTM, UTM, we are also very nice, uh, <laughs> we are from UTM, so I say, uh, when you publish a review as a student, as a first author in uh, any journal, and when you submit the thesis, definitely there is a pre particularly on the chapter two, right? But UTM allow you to to exclude it if the paper is come from yourself. Yeah, let's say when after you do the turn it in report, uh. 15% come from the paper A, which is the paper is from your review article. Your, you are it's the first author. So they will exclude it because it's part of your thesis. Ma. Yeah, it's part of the thesis. So you don't need to worry about pregnancy because you are the first author. Yeah. Okay. And then next question from Wana. Sorry, Prof, I'm asking about if my supervisor is corresponding. Can I get email from journal to ask if I am confirmed because I didn't get email. Uh, okay, uh, there, there, are, there are many journals or sometimes uh, is the student asking after he submit the paper or what? After what? he submit the paper. Uh, uh, your supervisor uh, suppose will tell you uh, if you ask. Suppose, uh, your supervisor should be receiving the notification. Yeah, this is quite common. I would say like uh, if you submit to sign direct, all the journal, every author will receive a notification. Maybe some journal they still send to only the corresponding author. Maybe. But nowadays, because of the as I said, because of the ethical issue, ma, ethical issue means you submit if we do only the other author, maybe after publication, after already accepted, publish online, then the author realize, huh, how come my name appear there? I never contribute but already accepted. So you cannot argue anymore. Pub already published. So the journal, most of them, they realize the issue. So now they, most of them, they will, I mean the good journal. Uh, so yeah, because there are some journal, the, the system is slightly different. They will notify each of the author in the system. I mean, you provide the email, they will send to each of them. Yeah. Okay, one last question here. Prof, can the paper submitted for conference proceeding to be submitted for index journal? Uh, you need to you need to look at the proceeding. Some of the proceeding itself are already indexed in the scopus. Some of the proceeding already indexed in the scopus. Some of the proceeding, if they do index in the scopus, they say they will index very soon, and then you submit it. Uh, most likely, you will not get the outcome you want uh, because index is not something easy, man. It takes time. So if you really want to publish in scope uh proceeding, then you choose those proceeding already indexed in the scopus, already indexed. Okay, that's all from the participants. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the course. And once again, thank you very much, Associate Professor Dr. Laoweijie, for the remarkable session on sharing some tips and tricks in writing a review article effectively. And dear participants, please stay with us for the photo session. And I would like to invite everyone to turn on your video and have a group photo together. Thank you. Yeah. So please wait for a while for the others to turn on their video. Uh, I saw some of the posters on my center. Otto Wong, Diana. Okay, so let's take a few shots now. Three, two, one, smile. And then, really, uh, have you taken the photo? Yeah, and then again? Yes, I am. 
Okay, sure. And then again, three, two, one, smile. One last photo. Three, two, one, smile. So I wish you all the best of all of you. Thank you. Sure. So Stay for yeah, sure. So on behalf of the organizing committee, we appreciate the efforts and participation in this event. And not to forget, please register your attendance using the using the link provided in the chat box to obtain merit and ease certificate. And the registration link shall be closed after 30 minutes. Do stay tuned for our next program and get updates in our official Facebook and, and Instagram, UTM PJFSFS. And thank you so much for your time and have a nice day ahead. Thank you very much to our respected speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Lau Weijie. See you all and stay safe. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Dr. Lau.